welcome back to the Free Play Arcade Podcast. It's been about three years since our last podcast. Um, some things have happened in the world and at Free Play. Uh, and so in this quick one-hour podcast, we're going to try to catch you up all the way so that we can jump right back into content that we know you actually like and you don't want to just live in the past, you want to live in the future. So I'll start by reintroducing everyone here. That is Richard Tregilgis, COO and co-founder of Free Play Arcade. We've got Chris Delp, community liaison and kind of the face of Free Play. Then we've got Kelsey Hyden, general counsel of Free Play Arcade. And you have me, Corey Hyden, president and CEO of Free Play. So we're here today. We're going to chat a little bit about where the hell we've been for three years. Um, we haven't posted anything really on YouTube for about three years. And uh, our last post, our last like main podcast post, I think, was in February of 2020. Um, and I think everyone listening is going to know kind of why. Um, but we've and I want to make sure I say right now really quick that we really, really have appreciated all the people who have been asking us to make more content on YouTube. Um, it's been constant. It's been really, really tough to just say kind of no for a long time because that's what we've been saying. We've been like, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. But here we are. Um, this is you know, first podcast we've really recorded. We've actually had other recordings that we just haven't actually been able to get on. Um, and we'll kind of get into that as we go through. So t- February 2020, Kelsey, where was the business? How was it going? It was amazing. We had just opened Free Play Fort Worth, um, I think November, mm-hmm. uh, late November of the previous year. And it was starting to kind of come into its stride. Um, our February was the biggest Free Play month ever. And um, on top of that, my son, who was turning nine, our son, actually, was turning nine at the time, and he went to Free Play Arlington for the best birthday party ever. That was early February. That was early February, yes. yeah. His February 10th was his birthday, and it was just, it was feeling amazing. And we also, you know, it's such a cool time once you open an arcade because it's so stressful and there's it's so busy um, getting it all ramped up and then kind of like, you know, tuning it in after you open. And we were finally getting to that period where we could finally breathe for a second and, you know just settle into our lives and do all the things that, you know, we hadn't gotten to and in the business and things like that. And, um, and so for those of you keeping track at home, free play Fort Worth was our fourth location. We had free play Richardson, free play Arlington, free play Denton and free play Fort Worth at that point. Um, and free play Fort Worth was outperforming all the other arcades. It was a massive, awesome launch, really cool area over in Magnolia district in Fort Worth, Texas. It was awesome, Um, and things were going really, really great. And then uh, about probably late February, mid-February, we started to see news reports about some sort of virus. Uh, By early March, it was a big news item. We were, of course, getting ready for a big spring break that turned out to not be a big spring break. Um, And then by the end of what would have been spring break, we were closed. Um, By order of the governor, everyone else, the county, everything else, Free play was completely closed. So we went from February, raw, awesome revenue to zero revenue in um, less than a month. And we, it, and we're, so guys, uh, for you at home. Oh, and also let me go ahead and really rebrief you for all the YouTube commenters um, in terms of people you like and don't like. Those two people you like, you're not quite sure on her. I'm the guy that you can hate in the comments. Um, so <laughs> Feel free to hate me too. It's fine. Yeah, I, no one ever does, though. So it's clearly a personality problem. Um, so uh, we're coming up. The and guy you like likes Corey then. Fine. The, the, nice. So we, um, we go zero revenue. Um, and we're trying not to be sad because it was really, really sad. We well, fired. So, I mean, just like it, it was the worst time. Um, and and the that's the time. thing, like it was the worst time for us, but we know it was the worst time for y'all too. It was such like a terrible ongoing time, but at that time it was just the worst. There was crying, there was firing everybody. Literally a hundred percent of the staff at one point was Inclu- terminated. Including the left side of the table. So yeah, 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 I mean, no, I, I mean every, yeah. Every, yeah. Every, including yeah. everyone sitting including at this table. Including everyone. Yeah. Um, but, but one of the more interesting things um, that we've never actually talked about publicly and that I think that I really found actually like from like kind of a logistics person interesting during that period of time. So we didn't even know if we would ever go back to any of our arcades. Um, we went to zero revenue um, and we didn't know if one, we would ever be able to open again. We didn't know if it was like the literal ap- apocalypse, like we didn't think so, but it, they're in the back of our minds. And so we, and we also were at zero revenue. So we had no good plans for paying our 
bills and free. We have a lot of bills. Well, that's the problem a with being a growing like company. We weren't a one location company, which meant we have staff, we have overhead, we have lots of overhead. Tons we have overhead. We, we have mm-hmm. benefits and stuff. And so even though we fired all of our staff, um, including ourselves, cut everything down to as close to zero as possible, we still had assets sitting in these properties that were no longer making a single dollar. Um, that are some of them very expensive, and nice generating, properties. Generating, I mean. Rent, utilities, like all of that pest control. Like we had to make, you know, we cut everything we could. But as I recall, we left pest control because yeah, well, we thought that's that, that's the optimist in us. Like we, we right, don't, that's we, how you know we, that we had some. We want to keep pest control because obviously that's one of the most important parts of running a restaurant. Those types of services. Um, but we, Richard, myself, um, other people that we were paying just cash for day labor, um, we, that used to be employees. We. Right. When we secured all the high value games and we moved them to Free Play Richardson, the one closest to our residences, and the one that personally, if we really, really had to, we might be able to pay for. Um, as because because Free Play Richardson was the original. Um, this was before we had an established concept. It's uh, you know if you are aware of all the different locations, you probably could guess that Free Play Richardson's rent was the lowest, um, and that was the one that we thought. If everything goes to hell, we're going to try to salvage that. And so we just packed it. We're talking, you know, Adam's Family Pinball, Twilight Zone Pinball, all these new Stern Pinballs, um, Trons, and your Vector games, all of these games that we that had high value, all these rare games, or even games that aren't necessarily high value but we couldn't replace easily, um, just games that we had collect, like literally had to collect to, to obtain. Um, we packed Free Play Richardson, and it probably had 200, 250 games in it. And it's a pretty small venue, so, it, I mean, mm-hmm. it was packed. Yeah, no lines. You couldn't play the games. It was just no. warehouse. But we thought, games. we can defend this space if absolutely yep. necessary. Right, yeah. It, it was, we, and that was the one that we still had security services for, camera, all this well, stuff. Well, and all four people at this table live within five, ten minutes of right. that arcade, so. So that was, um, we went into, like, full defensive mode, which was really interesting because, like, looking back now, a lot of that was wasted effort because absolutely but, but that was the hardest part of the pandemic i mean it wasn't the firing people was the hardest part because like ugh, tears hands but, down um the second hardest part was having to make all these decisions and like guessing how things were going to turn out and i can think back to different like moments where i was like okay this is what i think is going to happen and when we all had them and we all made our decisions based on that and then of course even if we made really good educated guesses it didn't turn out like that at all. Yeah, we were um, we were working with imperfect data, um, trying to predict the future. Yeah, I had the I had the stream going from what March fourteenth until after we, we had reopened in June. So that was going twenty four seven. There's a lot of those moments where it's just like, oh, this is really bad, and we're all crying, and I'm crying on camera. And I left this all up on the on one of the uh, the backup channels for posterity. But like, I'm crying, everybody's crying around me, and then we get worse news that no, 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 you thought it was. Everything, every business was being shut down. No, no, no. You all have to go home as well. So you can't even go into your work unless you're an essential employee. And this was the first time I'd ever heard that phrase. Right, yeah. So we um, we were all just kind of sitting at home. I mean, let me be clear. We were game planning, trying to figure out, and it was constantly evolving. And I was like, you know, there's different government aid. We're applying, like, we're just desperate trying to do anything we can. And then, yeah, we get to June, and we were the very last group of businesses that got to reopen. Thank you, Governor Abbott. <laughs> So Governor Abbott, I mean, bars were open before us. Um, water parks were Water open. parks were open. Bowling alleys were open before yeah, us. Yeah, well, that's what happened. When they when they released, they said bowling alleys can open. I immediately was like, I sent a text message that sounded really dumb five minutes later because I was like, guys, this is it. We can open. And then I think Matt and Richard were like, no. um, have you read further yeah. down in that order? Because it kind of it, specifically it out, yeah, said specifically we couldn't. said arcades. <laughs> we don't want those to open. Those no. were basically like the strip clubs of Texas, and <laughs> it, it's just too dangerous. It's true. We were actually in the same category with strip clubs, the, and, and so we got to reopen as soon as the strip clubs were allowed to reopen. That was that's still kind of here in the South in Texas. I mean, maybe most places. Um, kind of arcades are still considered kind of that bottom barrel business, which is very insulting to me. It's very insulting. Um, we were in a nice place. Because, like, I've been to some of these bars that got to open before us. That's – it's very insulting. Um, but uh, so we, we waited well, as long as anyone. I will say, in the meantime, we did do some little things. Like, we did um, food cert- – we had some fun. It was not in any way paying any bills. But we had some fun. We, like, you know, you could come do – pick up food at our Richardson location. And we did packs where you could get, like, some toilet Chris paper. Chris was running around delivering food yeah, sometimes. Yes. <laughs> well, but a lot of those things – I mean, those things were more so engineered to – take some of the products that we had in stock and one 
get them out to our customers that were still loyal to us before they expired to get some of our service staff some paychecks because we still had employees that... Well, we didn't have employees. Well, we had we day st- laborers. We still <laughs> had... <laughs> People who had formerly been employees, right. who but we were able it to was put nice some money to get them in some their money. hands at a time that that was not an easy thing to come by. Right. And so those kinds of things. And, you know, we were constantly doing everything that we could to make something work. And no, it was not profitable for us at all. It, that was not the point, but it was something to do. Couple, and a couple of things that were great about that was, A, tasting the food again from free play, which, you know, after all these years of all these trips to free play, you know, uh, a good chicken pesto was, man, it hit the spot at that moment. Um, Also, meeting those people when I was driving out delivering things, um, once we did open back up, uh, I I was introduced to a whole new generation of of free play players that came right at the, right the moment that we opened up. That was the first time that I met people like, you know, Barkeep Sarah, Mm -hmm. just, just right on a delivery uh, in an awkward moment, as we all were having them all at the same time communally, but it was it was an appreciated time that I do not want to relive. Yeah, let's never do that again. But there were some things that were kind of nice. Like I would show up at the end of every night to like close up and like settle up with everybody, and we'd be like, "Okay, guys, we'll text you and see if we're gonna do this again tomorrow." And it was very like, I don't know, it was wild. Well, and and in that downtime, I did redesign all the seating for Richardson. Came up with some booth plans. Came up with some walkade ideas. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, we built the wall gates. Yeah, yeah and, and came up with some ideas that could give us stuff to do while also um, potentially improving free play when we reopened. And I will say that all that downtime, especially at Richardson, really paid off because the Richardson layout now is better than ever. Um, and it would not have happened if we had just been open the whole time. Um, we redesigned the entire lobby area, lobby the, the dining area of free play Richardson, stuff like that. We came up with these wall gates that have been really successful. Um, and it also helped us figure out a way to introduce consoles and other stuff. Um, in ways that we hadn't really thought about. Um, but it was, it was terrible. So we reopened in June. Um, well, and if you guys were following how PPP loans worked, and it's just a little slice because we're not going to get it. It's a whole, that's like a book on its own. But in the very beginning, they were like, we're going to give you these PPP loans, and you have to spend it all in eight weeks. And we were like, okay, let's spend some money right, so we yeah. can get these loans forgiven. Let's bring back our staff. Let's get stuff up and running. Go, 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 go. Um, and then. We did. We well, yeah, so, so the government was trying to reinvigorate the economy three months into the COVID pandemic, which now sounds just insane. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but that was what was happening at the time, and we were on board. We were like, let's get back. Right, so we got, our, we got a PPP loan, and um, we had eight weeks to spend, um, basically. And so we brought all the staff that we could back. Um, we, we geared up. We fully stocked the arcades. We fully staffed the arcades. We had, you know, all we, I mean, we were just throwing money trying to get because they said throw money, right, right, right. So we and we definitely well, wanted to get those loans forgiven. We and didn't this want to have to repay them. This is with a dented closure. Well, well, we're not there yet. Hold yeah, on. Yeah. Pause. So, Pause. So, Pause. so we we reopen, um, and all four arcades come online fully. Um, we fully staff them, fully manage them, fully everything. Um, and yeah, we our our churn rate is is as high as it's ever been at Free Play, um, we, including back February when we were purposely doing great. because the amount of the loan was going to be really challenging to spend eat in those weeks. Yeah, I mean this was like a four hundred thousand dollar loan. We yeah. had to spend four hundred thousand dollars approximately. You can look; it's public record. That's why I'm saying, it. but it's public record. You can look it up. Um, and we we were supposed to spend it in eight weeks. Um, now, if you're listening to this, the government will later change all those rules they, after yes, the they fact. Did. They, well, they didn't. We hadn't spent it all. Don't worry. Right. We didn't make it. And then they were like, never mind. You can take a much longer period of time. So it all that actually worked out better. Thank you for making that change. But, man, it would have been cooler to not have been trying to burn the money for those that short bit of time that we were. And the because reason you know what happened. it would have been cooler was we had very few customers. Right. We um, opened. We, we actually, our first day we reopened, it was it, things looked good. Um, but then the, the Saturday after, because uh, we opened, reopened on a Friday, the Saturday following that, the Sunday following that, the Monday, the Tuesday, the Wednesday, all those people who were excited for us to reopen had come, and there was no one else. Um, our normal, just average arcade customer who just comes out to the arcade to have fun did not exist anymore. Um, yep. because the culture had changed. Well, we, had, yeah. we all had to wear masks. We all had to be six it's feet tr- apart. It's true, um, yeah. We had to put up really scary signs at the front well, of the arcade. And we were all just trying to figure out how to live our lives and in cleaning regimens space. were... Right. We, well, we, and we, getting cleaning supplies was impossible all of a sudden. Like, it was cra- We had to work so hard to source 
cleaning supplies that would actually clean. Mm -hmm. And I will never forget, and I hope Sharon Swain watches this, but when we opened the Arlington Arcade, what I heard is her family showed up with some of the cleaning supplies that were really hard to procure, and they gave them to our staff. And I just thought, that woman gets it. Right now, that was that was really really awesome, um, and and so though at the same time, yeah, um, I'm looking at the bank accounts, I'm looking at our expenses, mm -hmm. and I'm looking at our revenue, and you know that's that's my kind of my job as president, right, is is to watch cash flow, and our cash flow looked awful, oh um, so bad, and and unsustainable, and mm -hmm. um, by the middle of July, we had to start cutting staff again, we had to start cutting. Um, everything and we were you know in actively negotiating with all of our landlords because our landlords were like you're back open again i want all my money and that was the that was their starting position and we had to figure out how we were going to work that out because uh, the world ha the world was open but no one was coming outside mm -hmm. um i mean which makes sense it was a scary you know the news yeah, every day people were dying not like this was, for that. was this was this was a horrible time and and, and but it's, at the same time our existence required us to be we open might also say that we also weren't paying ourselves during this time oh yeah well that's, Just, that's, you know okay. throwing that out there. well i mean guys yeah that yeah was... we actually def I, like i bounced a payment <laughs> to the kids daycare <laughs> um which was really embarrassing and then the daycare was wonderful about it <laughs> right. um, because that's the thing the entire world was going through a collective yes. what the heck do we do now um experience right. so yeah. Um, Definitely prioritizing staff and all of those other things. Just. So we're mid July and our negotiations and and so let me be careful because there is actually a non disclosure agreement now covering this, but things were not working out well with our Denton landlord, um, and my legal arguments, which I think I had great legal arguments, the the downside of them was if we weren't required to pay rent and they disagreed, we were kind of required to move out, and that exact thing um, is what led us to leave our Denton location. Location number three um, closed during uh, at the end of July in and, 2020. And like permanently. Closed. And so I'm calling the people that worked out of that location and I'm like we're closing permanently. Mm -hmm. Right. And this this isn't... is the end. I don't know what else to tell you. We can't keep the space and and it, had nothing, and it had nothing to do with the people of Denton. No. Like I the, or the customers loved, who were that super was loyal. so hard to have those yeah. conversations with these people, these highly valued staff members about mm -hmm. this just like being the end of something. I don't like ends of things. They're sad. Um, and everyone was really wonderful about it, too. But that's, we packed everything up. We got out of there. I think, yeah. My, I mean, I remember the last day our, our my son, our I don't know how old he was at the time, like eight. Um, Maybe. I don't know. Seven. I think I said we, I had his nine-year-old birthday party in 2020, and that was totally untrue. He was much younger. That's, but uh, um, anyway, the whole point is he was there. We, like, emptied the whole thing out. We have this really sad picture of, I think, us three and James, James and my the, sons. Because James was employee number one at Denton. Um, and, and yeah, there's a photo of us all standing in front of the, the mural we'd actually just completed. The just beautiful before the, mural that Dan Black put on the side of the building that is just like, We, we oh, fought for years so to get. It's um, still there. And it's, it's still the, there, and you well, can drive past it, and it will lift your soul. So we're going to be speeding through, but I do want to point out, and this is not vindictive or anything, that space remains vacant. Um, so... Um, draw your own conclusions. Draw your own conclusions on, on what happened there. From um, that from that last day, I had a uh, diary that I, whenever we reopened in June, I, first of all, whenever we reopened, I really wanted to see people. Even right. from six feet away, that meant so much to me. I got a diary. I said, if you beat me at any single game in here, I want I want your autograph. And I literally was collecting autographs every day of someone who beat me in a game. There it is. Aww. That last day in Free Play Denton, I got an autograph from literally everybody who walked in the door that day. So I do have this book with an autograph from literally every single of the last original Free Play Denton customers. And they remained super loyal uh, in, the, in the aftermath of that. Employees and customers alike had been so close-knit that we would go all together and visit different locations, Fort Worth a lot, um, Arlington, Richardson, just kind of on loop. You know, this week we're going here, this week we're going there. So even though we had to close shop in Denton, the, the customer base, the, the people who loved Free Play Denton never, never, never stopped. Well, yeah, that was, I, I remember the final day Free Play Denton was open because we showed up at close to start removing the high value stuff out of yep. Free Play Denton. And the worst part was there were still customers there, 
and they like they got it they knew what was happening and they would not leave and i'm not trying to be mean it was just it was so hard because they're like they you could tell they almost felt like if they never left we could never close yeah. <laughs> we could never and and so we did we um we emptied free play denton um and closed forever um that location and we also, in the meantime, went to um, we open only on weekends at Free Play Fort Worth and Free Play Arlington. Free Play Richardson stayed seven days a week because we were close by, and, and we could support the we could support and personally. staff it. Um, and um, we had to cut additional staff, obviously, because we were cutting hours down. Um, it was it was like it all over again. Wow, and, and it was one of the you know most of our staff came back when we reopened, but we did have some staff members that went, um, and we haven't seen since. We miss them. So, um, the rest of 2020 was awful. Um, pretty much constantly trying to figure out if the company's going to make it. Um, pretty much constantly trying to figure out if uh, if it even makes sense to to operate. If if we should be shut down and see if we, um, because knowing everything, we probably should have been even more. And we were in pretty heavy cash preservation mode. Right. Um, we probably should have done it even more extreme. Um, we we hit a really big low in December 2020 um, because it started to look like for real the the bank account was going to hit zero. Well, I really forgot we were actually selling a bunch of games and, and things out right. of yeah, warehouses. Yeah, we were doing all sorts of now. Now I will say, yeah, I will say, money. yeah, any any game that I knew wasn't going back to the free play floor, which meant even the stuff that I truly loved but that just didn't work on free play, yeah. we were selling. And I remember some of the people that I reached out to, oh. and I said, hey, I think I'm going to let go of the game, this game, and they were like, name your price, I'll bring you a check. And if you ever want it back, just give me the check back. Um, it was it was really just like these beautiful moments because it had created all these nice relationships with different collectors and different different people in the arcade community. Um, but yeah, they it, it was it was not li- liquidation. It was like losing children that we had to sell to try to pay for our, our buildings and our, our operations and keep our staff going. Um, and we almost didn't make it. There was a time in December. That you know we were we were so so close to death, and at that exact same time, and this is well, hold on. And before, I feel like we also have to say like during that time, we had some really amazing members of our community that did some really amazing things that were really like so moving and so material, and making us feel like that there was hope for our business to succeed and last. Um, we had a Patreon, and a lot of you supported us there, and um, it it just it meant a lot to us and um, kept us going at a time that, again, we weren't sure that we were gonna make it. Yeah, I mean, honestly, we all felt, I think we felt kind of weird about all of that because it was- Yeah, we did. Well, I felt like there was an obligation there too because like the whole time we're like coming up with backup plans in case we actually run out of money and things like that. And, you know, we're thinking through how bankruptcy works and things like that. Um, Yeah, yeah. well, uh, well, and, and you know, Taking money from like a Patreon, right? It, I mean, we had different little things that were included as part of the Patreon. Um, but to be honest, it felt it, we've built the entire business on we do really cool arcades, we make it a good value, we make money through that. Yeah. Like you, we, it's a it's a pure exchange, and all of a sudden people are just like giving us money, donating us money, and stuff like that. Um, again, we were still contemplating bankruptcy. I mean, we were right on the line. But that was the right. thing. How do you how do you actually declare bankruptcy when, these when people, people are giving you yeah. money and they believe in you and they're doing it because they want to keep you alive? So then you have to stay alive, right? That's that's the trade. Your, your thoughts on this side of the table about responsibility when it comes to that, um, that is why that was happening. We all know, you know, that you are responsible enough not only to have the greatest arcade in the world, but maintain it and and care about your employees as much as it's on your face right now. And it was obvious. Uh, I remember Imran came on the podcast, the podcast, the the endless stream that would never end um, <laughs> from Austin. And he, he owned an arcades, uh, arcades out there. And he said, um, if one arcade makes it through this, it has to be free play. This is an, a, a, another arcade owner says it has to be you guys. So, so everybody uh, believes and the people on this side of the table and our faith is well placed and your your responsibility here is is part of why it is well placed you well, wouldn't you wouldn't take it for granted it's really funny too because like ever since we opened i've been focused on how can i make free play last forever mm. and that was really like how i was building free play was you know if a tornado knocks out one of our locations or some crazy thing happens that somehow shuts a location down mm-hmm. we can still pay our bills we can still keep our staff on all of that stuff and I, and every every time I would laugh about it, and there's nothing that could stop all of them. Right. It, it, 
It came it up all the time. It felt like we were bulletproof. Right. Like things were going so well in February 2020 that it felt like we were bulletproof. And I guess. Yeah. Well, I'm sure the pandemic wasn't a thing to yeah, personally right. teach me a lesson, but, <laughs> but yeah, I did it, learn it was, a really it was big a, lesson. It was a really, really humbling experience. Um, but so this and this is where, though, um, that making free play last forever comes into play because I was sitting there. It's December 2020. We're running out of money. But there has to be a light at the end of the tunnel, right? There has to be some, some, somehow it's going to turn around. Yeah, life can't go on be- like that forever. And, and you know, and, and it was really funny too at the time because I was getting so mad um, because I was like, anyone who just starts a new arcade right now doesn't have the baggage that we have. Um, and I was so jealous. Right, there's uh, such a big hole be- because, at that point Because of at the same time, other people are like announcing that they're going to open arcades and stuff. Well, there's an awful you know, lot of vacant cause, space. Because, yeah, commercial real there's estate. This is cheap. Loans are kind of easy to come by now and things like that. And I was, uh, yeah, and that was the thing. I was so jealous because it would be so much easier to start fresh than to be someone who had existed through yeah, COVID. Trying to dig yourself out of that big old hole. And, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm like, what's the best move for free play? And I started looking at this commercial real estate and it was a low point for commercial real estate because especially retail, right? Retail commercial real estate was. And so I'm looking around, I'm looking around, I'm looking at the different closures and stuff. And I keep coming around to this piece of real estate. This is December 2020. We're probably going bankrupt. But there's a spot on the Denton Square that would work for a free play. And it's just this thing. I find it on and in the back of my head. I'm like, we have most of the games we would need. Um, I mean, we did close the whole arcade. It was right? a former, so, it was a former venue bar, so it's generally kind of set up for you know um, not too different than our business, um, and it's just sitting there in the back of my head, and like, I start saying, you know what, I'm gonna go tour it. I we have no way to buy this building. We have no way to purchase this building. We, I mean, this is even with depressed yeah, it was real definitely estate. Definitely a very crazy thing for him to be doing. This is at a the time. yeah. Well, this is a multi million dollar piece of property. This even is, um, at depressed real estate. This is how Corey's ideas start. Though. And so right. yeah, he so like dreaming about these impossible things. So I drag I think Richard to the first meeting, and I was like, we're gonna tour a building. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We don't have a way to do it. And and like we're there, and I'm like. I just dealt with all these landlords, right? And mm-hmm. one of my ideas is like, what if we just owned a location? Like, wouldn't that be better? Oh um, my gosh, no be- landlord? Be- because, because that's the other thing too, during the pandemic, the banks were a lot easier to deal with in terms of like mortgages, stuff like mm-hmm. that, compared to landlords. Because landlords, they gotta get their rent. They gotta get their rent. They gotta get their rent. Well, and to be fair, a lot of them have need right? their oh, rent yeah, so they yeah. can pay their mortgages and things like yeah. that. And I'm not, Absolutely. I mean, we had, we had the full spectrum of landlords in the pandemic and some were pretty cool and some were not cool and everything in between. So we tour this building and it feels kind of like a free play to me. I'm like, and, and, and I'm coming up with all these ways to conceptualize like a very, very low risk, um, free play. Mm -hmm. Um, and this building to describe it, it's, um, a huge basement, um, 6,000 square foot, 6,500 square foot basement. Um, and it's a building right on the Denton Square. And if you on the corner the, of the square. On the corner of the square. Um, it's kind of an ugly building, but uh, especially at the I time. Mean, it was de- it's, I mean, it's definitely... It's you not know, new. It's on the Denton Square. Right, yeah. It's, it's not just not that. Modern. Like, it had been rehabbed semi-recently, and the, the choices on the facade could have been better. So, we're, so, but the inside of it, it's got these kind of cool bones. It's got a kitchen. It's got two bars. Um... And it had a it had a stage. It smelled terrible. Um, <laughs> it you know it, it was a true Denton Square building. Um, and it also had a tenant, which was really interesting, a comic book shop um, that was going through their own pandemic stuff, yeah, um, as as everyone was. And so I just start thinking about that. Um, and so then also in December we were contemplating bankruptcy. Um, we are running out of money. We're but. I, I start building these models, these attendance models and stuff, and I see, and I build an attendance model that says we're gonna make it. Um, I think we did end up having to like find money somewhere and, and stuff like that to get to the cross the line. But mm-hmm. Christmas break that December was not like normal Christmas break, but it wasn't terrible. It was mm-hmm. just awful. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like, like, but that's an improvement. But, and I was, but it was bad. It's like, an we were improvement. like, we'll take it. Thank you for this little thing. And so, and I don't remember what our actual tax return said, but we lost just an unbelievable amount of money in 2020. Um, and so when we get across the 2020 line, and we're still in existence. Um, and so we get to 2021, and I start negotiating the purchase of this building. Um, Which is kind of crazy. That's still crazy. It right. was 
really crazy, but we're gonna make it happen. Well, that's the thing. You or know, we're gonna the, the, explore the big problem and see is if like, we can actually make it happen. Is, is how where we're at. Where am I gonna come up with mul- you know multi millions of dollars? Which in we the mi- literally barely have we enough don't money. Have like in to the middle of a pandemic, go day to day. Um, when all banks are really, especially retail, per- like all banks are like dealing with their own mortgage problems because they've got all of these landlords who now have issues paying their mortgage because they don't have I mean it's it's not a good environment um, so I started negotiating for the building to try to figure out how much money I have to go find um, and I do that we negotiate I get to about a price that I think is um, quite depressed um, though still millions of dollars um, and so I go out there and I find the money um, and we, we we buy this building um, that's really the, the long and short of it. It took. It, it was took, really brilliant. The details are so boring about how right. it actually came about, and I don't think it would be interesting for you to hear. But it was really brilliant. And it took a long time to get everything closed, uh, as you might imagine, um, and everything. And we had to sit there and keep it all secret, right? Because like we had signed the contract, but it, this was the kind of building that takes mul- many, multiple months to close. <laughs> Because um, you've got all these different types of inspections. This building, it, as I mentioned, has a basement now, so it has a first floor, um, and it has an elevator. Um, Which is amazing because it's an old building, and it has another floor, and you want it to be accessible. And, and yeah, and so, you know, we had to go through all these different elevator inspections and evaluations, and we had to go through building inspections and evaluations, and we had to figure out, you know, like, how to appraise. All that stuff that you do with a normal property just times, like, 10 because it was a commercial building. Um, but we, we made it work and we had to keep it all secret. And that was like, so that was kind of the first part of 2021 business still terrible. Um, that's probably, right. we're still I mean, uh, and losing so, massive and like, amounts of money. Business is terrible. Like it's, t- you know, all of our wonderful staff that's there working, like it's worse than it was before. Customers are difficult. They did that whole, you know, dealing with people and their various opinions on masks and them just, you know, being right. front facing and trying the... to keep people, you know, in line, kind of. Oh my goodness, guys, could we cooperate? Right. Cooperate right. for there, a second. Because that was the real thing. It didn't really matter what your opinion on masks were. There were rules, there were laws, there were, I mean, e- everything that we're just trying to com- do our best to comply with. Um, I don't know how many angry emails I had to deal with right. with people that were unhappy with the line that we chose to take. Well, and if you look at our periods, um, mm-hmm. if you ever if you ever divide by kind of our star reviews, like we have a 4.8 average across all of our arcades, but during COVID, we have a 4.4 average. Um, because Which is still amazing. Still great, but it was almost entirely people who were very upset that the law was the law. Um, and that was that was it. It was it was very, very tough. And I, I had to have that conversation in public all the time. It was it was the most exhausting thing about it all, just every single time and I did not start working at Free Play to become mask police. Nobody did. It. it was well, everyone was did. Every single person that had to deal with people on the issue of masks just like I know feels the worse about humanity worst even part today. Of the job. Right. Well, and that that meant there, that meant that these jobs that used to be great were, were were even if they were still great they were worse. Um yeah. even if they were still good they were worse. And it was state mandated. It was so <laughs> infuriating right. because, you know, we're why why I am just here to make not make like enjoy arcade games with people and spread that experience and send them to the bar and all the things that are obviously free play policing masks i'm not the police right not at all so being put in that position by the state was super awkward. well and, and of course every single staff member has their own personal opinions about it every single and it was well and then also their health is caught up right. on the health of the organism that is the location they're working in you know mm-hmm. they are having people come in i mean we I mean, at this point, hasn't everyone gotten COVID? But, like, we, it, it happened. Like, people, we all got COVID at different times. Everybody that works for us, I bet, has gotten COVID. And some of them, let's be honest, got COVID while they were at work because people came in. And that's what happened. Well, yeah, any any existence in the world was exposing yourself to COVID, no matter what. No matter where you worked, no matter what. If you went outside, it was out there. Um, Mar- and March of 2020, when we shut down, you know, I was telling myself and telling the people that was watching the endless stream, I would do anything to get to be able to like play and and be a, any small part of what I was missing right now, which was all the people and the games and the, all the everything. So I meant it. You want me to wear a mask? I'll wear a mask. Well, that was right. literally yeah, that, anything, literally that, anything, and that was that was what was asked, and that was what I did, and that was not. No, I have no qualms with that. Uh, it just it was exhausting over time having to deal with people coming in and taking their fights with state officials and, and government officials to a random 
right, bartender to an arcade, or right. arcade employee. Or like brand new host who has to now get dressed down because of something that really is completely just, out they of their control. Here. They just and, work and, here. And you know, right. anything we could do to try to mitigate that didn't work. You know, it was like, nope. tell, tell them to email the, the CEO of the company. Tell them to email the governor. It didn't matter. They just wanted to yell at the person in front of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, but that was the interesting thing about early 2021 there is the complaints, everything starts getting worse because we're busier. There's more people coming to the arcade, um, which, you know, that was that, that interesting kind of dynamic. The busier we got, the more likely we are to actually survive, but also the more complaints, the more problems, the more everything, especially during those mask times. And from some people that have spent the last several months at home and maybe have forgotten how to treat other people. Right. We all, there was we, a lot we, of we, that going on. We have all these people who've lived in their house and had their, you know, the complete, like, rule of the land, right? Um, and now they're going out into the world again. And we all, I think, lost a little bit of ourselves to COVID. Um, but a lot of people definitely lost the ability to function like normally in the world for a little bit of there. And some people are still still relearning it. But as a public facing company with retail access, it was brutal. Um, okay, but, so, but let's not dwell. Yeah, we're going. We're this going. is all sad stuff. So let's move on. So we've we've in the meantime, we've entered a contract to, to purchase that building on the Denton Square. Um, we're trying it like we're in the background formulating free play Denton 2.0. Um, and then in the summer, uh, we actually get the keys and that was the coolest thing we got to do. It happened. Cause we got the keys and now there's a lot of work to go, but we get the keys and that means we get to announce something. Well, and not, I back up just a little bit. So we're down there and we're waiting for the keys. Cause there was like this period between closing and waiting for the keys. I just thought they were gonna magically wind up in my hand right away, but that didn't happen. So we went and we like stared at the face of what was now our building. And some of us had free play t-shirts on and it was a really cool moment because people started walking by on the streets and yelling support for free play. And it's just this really special thing about Denton. It's such a wonderful, supportive place. And it was so hard to leave. And in that moment, it really just, you felt the excitement of people coming back. And it, it started right then and it didn't stop until we were open. Well, yeah, and we got to, I mean, that that day at the square, we were sitting there in the Denton Square. We we're all, I think we were all in free play shirts. And people just start wondering why there are a bunch of people in free play shirts hanging around the square. And they, they're like figuring it out. And then they, they're like mm-hmm. live figuring out, oh my gosh, something's happening. And what I want to, like, I, I'm not trying to like say that this was some grand thing that happened in people's lives. It wasn't. But there was this time that everything seemed so bleak. And to hear that a business was coming back that you liked was huge news. Huge news. Um, and so we, I mean, we were in every newspaper that Free Play Denton was coming back. As soon as we went and announced it, every newspaper, every, like, it was news because a company that was ravaged by the pandemic, as bad as any company could be, entertainment, front-facing, it was as bad as it could have been, was making a comeback and was was returning to a location, an area that they had had to leave because of COVID. And now, if you think about the timeline right now, it's insane. This was, this was really? just absolutely insane. Um, because 2021, even summer when we got the keys, it's still COVID. Now, business is, uh, looks like it's coming around. It's- yeah, but like in retrospect, like where we are now, looking back at when we were like, no, 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 business is getting better. It was, it was just really we, not getting better. It was so terrible. We so were terrible. walking a tightrope. Um, we were, at, at any second, we could fall and die. Um, and I think we were just telling ourselves that it was like helping, like thinking that it was better than it was so we could like keep on going and feel the hope, which it turned out was justified. Oh, always. But you had to keep going and that was really hard to manage. So um, so then we get to this kind of interesting, challenging period where we have to develop an arcade. We have the keys, but it's not ready. Um, and it, it was, you know, it was an old Denton venue. So it had a lot of work that needed to be done. And we I'm didn't have money to honest, do the work. The, the situation was not great there at the end for the last operating business. There was a lot of stuff that, was well, yeah, in I, really you know, rough shape. I do a lot of work on the cheap, so right, right. there our, we go. Our our in house facilities <laughs> <laughs> team 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 kind of had to do more than uh, almost any other build yeah. because it's not like we had any money um, and we had to get the place open. And and while it was a functioning bar before um, it had closed, and it had closed a little bit before the pandemic, so it had been closed for a year and a half or so. Um, it was it was not in good shape, and all the not stuff all shape. the stuff that looked like it would have been okay turned out not to be. Yeah. All the bars needed much more work because it was a functioning bar. You would have thought the bar was working. No, 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 no. No, no. and um, like they, uh, all of the choices that were made were just like the least good choices. The you know, 
there's still stuff about the location even now that I'm like, man, I wish originally somebody had done something better there. Right. Yeah. So um, and, and part some of it is that it, it is an old building that has mm -hmm. been kind of brought along to be this cool venue. Yeah. Um, other parts of it were just, you know, like kind of shoddily done. Yeah. Bad stuff. Sorry. So um, so we're developing free play Denton during the fall of 2021. Um, and the fall is historically, of course, our slow season. I, if you've, you're a longtime podcast listener, you've heard uh, me lament the fall season all the time because it comes right after the si summer season, which is a great season. Fall season is so hard because all of a sudden cash flow goes boop. And no matter what, no matter how much, and we talk about it all the time with our staff and everything, there's like psychologically they're never ready. Right. The summer happens and they think it'll be summer every day for the rest of their lives and it just won't be and, and the yeah, fall is coming it's it's, it's like, doomsday like you've got like winter is coming right right like, you, you've, <laughs> you've got this terrified like they're like man it's a lot slower than it was is it and, and especially after covid right is everything okay are, are we gonna make it and and so at a time where we are hemorrhaging money even though we're doing denton are mostly in-house we're doing everything we can i mean there were outside contractors and stuff obviously mm -hmm. there had to be but um we're doing it as as quickly and as cheaply as possible while doing it great. Well, and um, I have to say that our two, we had two returning staff members, James and Marcos, and they were amazing. Right. They did Absolutely. such an amazing job. They're such skilled human beings, and they really, like, rolled up their sleeves and dug in. Well, yeah, because especially during the fall. The fall is also really hard because it's the lowest revenue, but it's the most holidays, most events. There's all these things you're getting ready for, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Halloween. Um, and like you're in the middle of COVID, do you run Halloween parties? Do you not? It's all, it's all these hard choices. Um, do you I do mean, New Year's Eve? Do you not? We it's all... did in like a reduced capacity. Right. Yeah. Like, it, it was. It was all basically these decisions to be made all the time. Decisions to be made. And so we, well, we and everyone was criticizing everything. Right. And right. No, no matter how hard you tried to make the best decision you could, it was not going to make even like seventy five percent of people happy. Well, yeah. It, it was because everyone had opinions, right? It was like. There, some people were just mad that we existed at that point, mm -hmm. um, that that we would dare have a public facing business, and it was just kind of like this is you know this was our How career, this is our job. Dare you. Well, this is like at that time. I mean, all of us, we had all just been given like the last five six years of our lives had been dedicated to this company, and then all of a sudden in March 2020, it seemed like every single bit of blood, sweat, and tears could be ripped away from you, um, with nothing to show for it, and you know that was hard, guys. So yeah, so. Um, Let's go to happy stuff. Yeah, let's go to happy stuff. So yeah. um, it's December 2021, and Freeblade is about ready. Um, and um, one of the, the greatest things that happened was our good friend, um, muralist Joe Skills, right? Mm -hmm. Jose May. He is, um, you know, looking for murals to do. And we sync up with him. And uh, it was actually Marcos that you had mentioned from Din comes up with some crazy mural idea and I'm pitching it. And, uh, you know, Joe Skills is so like, he's like, let's do it all. And so over the course of like a week in December, mm -hmm. Free Play Denton comes, like it gets the, this vibe and it's the murals. It's the, everything is coming together. And I'm like, okay, this place is getting ready to open. And remember we'd closed an arcade. So we, this new, this new Denton location was three times as large as the old Denton location. Our old um, Denton location didn't have food service at all. Right. This one was going to have food service. So our old Denton location, um, this was this was an upgrade in every single way. Mm -hmm. um, and, but we did have a lot of games in that old Denton location. So we still we had to bring new games in. We had to source games. We had to make games that we had in the back stock work again, stuff like that. Um, but it was we were, we had such a good seed because we had we'd had that old Denton location. Well, and we did have some other and, and in returning addition, staff. We had some other returning staff. We had Derek come back. Paul came back. Um, everybody else had kind of like dispersed yeah, we, to the winds. Yeah, which yeah, which is, isn't un unexpected. But so we get right ready to open Denton, and we do it, and it's still pandemic. There's we're off mask requirements now. They're just recommended. Um, vaccine's been around for months, uh, like seven months at this point, and we open Denton, and it opens well. And it opens in between. We have Christmas, right? And we open Denton like right for New Year's. We do a New Year's pop-up actually. So we had like two beta tests and then New Year's Eve pop-up uh, event. And it's going great and people love the place. And it's it like if you had gone to the first Free Play Denton, this one is clearly better. And, and, and I say that like, like I, I loved love... Free Play 1.0, yeah. Free Play Denton 1.0. That was one of my favorite arcades of all time. But 2.0 is better. Um, we're it right on, better. we're right, Massively. we're right on the square, two bars, full kitchen. I mean, the old location held 60 games, and it was 
cramped. New location has 130 games. It doesn't feel that cramped. Man, I've always wanted a basement arcade, And it's a basement arcade. Full light control over 6,500 square feet or something like that downstairs is incredible. The vibe down there is untouchable because that feels like one of the arcades you went to in the late 80s, early 90s because it there were basement arcades. And Texas is a lot harder to have basements. You have to go to like historic square right. to find, you know, a downtown area to find a good oversized basement. And there we were in Denton doing our dream. We, you know, we kept the pink, we kept the blue, we kept the vibe, mm -hmm. but we brought space and we brought an even cooler bait. Like that basement is so cool. Um, and yeah, it worked. In many ways, it feels like Denton 1.0 is the top floor, except right. for the back room is now a kitchen, right. so I can get food there as well. And then you go downstairs, and then voila, it's this basement. Narc is there at the at the front <laughs> front of it. I'm definitely thinking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and it is glorious down there. So it's 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 what I want up to, up top up top of that old feeling. It's not as cramped as it was. Um, and all the taps, and then I go downstairs, and it's just amazing. It when I walked in there, I was like, "This is the best arcade I've ever been in." It's like never-ending arcade vibes too, because like you walk in there and you're like, "This top floor is okay," and and then you go downstairs and you there's more arcades, and then you turn, there's more arcades, and then you turn, there's a whole row of arcades with a huge row of pinball at the back, and the beautiful mm -hmm. heaven is a place on earth sign right in the middle in your view, and then you were like. There's another bar. There's another bar, and it's got a ton of taps and a ton of liquor. And January 2022, which was the first full month Denton was open, mm -hmm. Free Play Denton was our most successful arcade, um, and we were back. Like that was that really felt like that was the we're um, closing the sadness chapter of our life. Because along with Free Play Denton coming back and doing great, all the other locations are starting to do real business. Mm -hmm. um, and so we had, you know done the riskiest thing probably i mean one of the riskiest things that i can even contemplate doing buying a yep. building in the middle of the pandemic um figured out how to make it all work figured out how to get that place open and you know figure out how to get the games get the staff because one of the, the things that especially as you scale up um in this business is opening locations is very expensive, very expensive. um and and especially setting expectations as high as we had like the real thing is like the expectations for free play richardson there were none uh, when we opened free play richardson everyone loved it because we were the only ones because like, it was a new thing, and they knew we were just like starting out, and everyone was really supportive. But once you, it free play Richardson today looks nothing like it did on, on day, day one, right? mm -hmm. and so now every location that we open, everyone expects to be like fully grown. Well, and every location that we open, it is bigger and more improved, and has. And, newer. And, well, and it has to be polished at open. More polished. Um, but no even, matter how polished it is, it still takes time to settle in and live in it and figure out what actually works. And there's just no shortcut to that. Right. That would be my biggest complaint, like, is to, like, to the consumers is, like, we actually do. We're, like, there aren't that many companies that get better from day one. Like, day one for a lot, especially in the restaurant industry and in the hospitality industry, the nightclub industry, bar industry, most of them open as good as they're ever going to be. But Free Play does not do that at all. Free Play Richardson is better today seven years later than it was on day one. Free Play Arlington, six, six and a, or five and a half years later, six years later actually, um, is better than it's ever been. Um, Free Play Fort Worth is better than it's ever been. Free Play Denton, which we opened recently, is actually has actually had tons of changes since we opened, even though it's only been open for like a year and some change. Um, tons of improvements already there. Um, because we get better, especially the, one of the th interesting thing about arcades is lines of games. When you figure out the best way to get the game arrangement, it changes the whole arcade. Mm -hmm. um, and like one day I'm going to be teaching a college course on like game floor theory because I think that there is a perfect game floor out there. I think Richardson actually after seven years is close to maximizing the floor space while maximizing um, dining area. Well, I think that that's really, really, really close. Um, I actually have some changes, but. I think I think there is a theory. I think it, there is a good way to improve. So, we opened in. That's that was life changing. Um, life changing for the company. Uh, we went from and and right along that with that, everything is coming fully back at that point, fully online. We are going to go through more COVID waves um, in 2021 or 2022. Now, 2022, we're going to go through more COVID waves, but none of them feel like they are business threatening anymore. That was the big thing about opening Denton, and of course, I mean everyone loves Denton. So, you know, in my normal self, the second Denton's open, I'm like, what's next? Um, and, and it's not 
that wasn't it. We were doing all this other stuff overlapping. Oh, yeah. We had tons we, of work. We used to have our headquarters, which we are in now, used to be kind of across the way, and it wasn't working anymore. We didn't have enough space. Um, we didn't have any money because it was in the middle of all the stuff we just oh, yeah, talked we about. Yeah, we were condensing all right. of our warehouses. Um, and I we totally forgot like, about that. We weren't, yeah, we were trying to condense our warehouses so we had less. it cost too much you know, money. Too much rent and things like that. And so we were like, well, let's move to where we are now, across the way to this very large, but very. And he's work. Unpolished uh, building. is yeah, the yeah, kindest yeah. way I can say it. Um, well, to be, to be honest, it's not like we were in polished spaces before. No, we, we were, definitely were not we, in polished spaces before. We were but in this one. This one needs a lot of love. It was previously like a um, industrial manufacturing facility. And you know, the landlord ripped out some of that stuff for us, but like literally every piece of this place needs at least painted, if not totally replaced and restored and things like that. So, um, so we came on over here. We just, and we were, we were very busy we actually. Went, so, so we went from about 10,000, 12,000 square feet um, office warehouse with most of it being warehouse. Um, to 20,000 square feet with a solid 7,000, 8,000 square feet office. Um, because in the back of all of this, um, as we're getting our feet back, we're getting our corporate staff back. We're getting, we're, we're figuring out what our corporate structure needs to look like, all of that. Um, and so we need a place to put these people. So we move into offices. And it's really nice actually, because at our old location, I don't know if any of you ever visited us there, but like... Corey and myself had our regular like tiny little desks that we worked in and there was a conference table and Chris would come in with his laptop mm -hmm. and Richard would come in and set up but like it was like we a, there was one office yeah, we had a conference one office right. it was about the size of the room the podcasting room we're in now and um this everyone, table that we're sitting was, at is about the size of the conference table that we all sat at and it was right. well you know I this, had my feel, little desk this, this and podcast just, feels like that right this yeah. podcast feels like yes. talking around that table yes yeah. and it was it was it was a little hard so we all to get our work done in that one little space. Yeah, we took over this large space now, 20,000 square, all centrally located. Everyone works in the same area. All the games are almost to the same area. And we have all these nice plans Soon. for actually like finishing out our break rooms. So but but know. finishing out 18,000, 19, whatever it is, 20,000 square feet of space has taken time. And that was actually, we were working on that. Um, that was actually my next idea was, was, doing the eight, was doing a big headquarters. And in the middle of doing the headquarters, a real estate opportunity emerged. Um, as so, they sometimes do. As they do. So, you know, I, I'm always looking for cool places to put arcades. And, and you that's- You don't know this about Corey. He's always looking, like, he has ideals all the time. Like, we wake up in the morning and he's like, let's do something crazy. And he tells me what that crazy thing is. And like, the amount of ideas are just hundreds of them floating around in our lives. And I think the ones that actually happen are the ones that anybody else gives him the slightest amount of encouragement. For. No, it's it's really the the least negative feedback I get. Those yeah. are the ideas mm. that, that I get to go because like that's the thing. I'm always pitching stuff and gauging the response, mm -hmm. and it, no one's ever like, "Let's do it," um, like a hundred percent. Except for the original free play pitch. That was okay. three, ever, yeah. the, the three. The three. That, that was the hardest leap. I and I'm think. sure Chris would have been like, let's do it too if he was around back then. But I, I was literally there <laughs> outside the window. I nice. can very clearly remember the craft paper on the windows. I was definitely with you in spirit. Hands right. up on the glass. So, and right behind there. So that that was, but um, so it's a, to, to kind of cut it short, um, there were some areas of, DFW um, that were really really cool before the before COVID that had been in rough shape because of COVID, mm -hmm. um, and one of them that I'm talking about is Trinity Groves in Dallas. Um, it's this beautiful location that's uh, kind of a, a hot. It was it was a hot spot before um, COVID of restaurants, um, incubated re restaurants, full service restaurants, entertainment, um, dense housing. Like it's this really really cool area with the most beautiful views of the Dallas right, skyline. It's right at the the end of the um, Margaret Hunt Hill, yeah. Hunt Hill Bridge. It's very beautiful. There's an architectural top to it that looks really lovely, and you can see downtown yeah, across if you can, the way. If you if you can envision a suspension bridge in the Dallas skyline in your mind, you're looking from the parking lot of Free Play Dallas. Yeah, and, and you'll see lots of postcards of Dallas and stuff that are all taken from this area because it's a great view. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and I had you know I was aware of this area of Trinity Groves. I'd eaten lunch, dinner there before. Um, thought it was a really cool it's area. Really, I mean Trinity Groves is really cute. There's an art park out there where you can go sit outside and um, drink and play Jenga if you want. I I have a really nice memory of playing Jenga with these two guys um, there in the last. That's, that's my number one spot in Dallas pre-pandemic to take a date. Yeah. Trinity yeah, it's, it's a really nice going out place. And post-pandemic, 
literally every best spot to take a date is right. all free place. Well, yeah. And, now, well, and it's, it's kind of cute, too, because there's the the art park and the restaurants that are there in Trinity Groves, and then it's right next to the bridge, and you can kind of wander over to the bridge in the evenings, and there's yes. stuff going on there, and it's kind of, it's funky and fun. There's things to buy. There's food. There's, like, I've said this before, but, like, when we went to check it out when we were thinking about taking over the space, there was, like, a really cool rap battle going on. So I haven't actually gotten to the point, but there was a okay. space at Trinity Groves. Sorry, sorry. So, so, that, uh, so, so, so basically, Trinity Groves gets just destroyed by COVID, as you'd imagine. Um, any place that's a dense, cool place to go. Um, and uh, they had vacancies. And Trinity Groves, of course, if you know anything about it, they don't normally like try to lease their vacancies. They try to incubate new concepts out of these vacancies. Um, but they had this really big space um, that had the coolest view of downtown Dallas. And this was the kind of space that I never thought the free play would get to. Um, like, I thought even if we expanded and everything, you know, I was, ex you know, at first I thought, you know, we'd be in strip centers and warehouses forever. Um, and then as we started kind of expanding and we started getting into these cooler areas, we kind of were able, um, and, and landlords took us seriously, right? Because we, because that's the, one of the big things is like once you, when you're a one unit and eh, when you're a two unit, eh, but as you get a little bit bigger and bigger, landlords start becoming like your biggest fans, right? Well, and a good landlord is looking to cultivate a, like good businesses in their center because that, you know, it makes it a cool area. More good businesses move in. It's it, everybody rises together. Right. right. But one of the things that we're also not looking for or that we haven't been pursuing is going along with those, the trendy areas also have increased rent prices well and, and they rarely have the space we would really need to operate in any event right so it's one of those things but this was a slightly different opportunity well yeah so this this was a space that actually checked just about every box right. um in terms of size in terms of build out in terms of everything that we were really looking for um and it was a former event venue um and it it had features that i that i never would have thought freeplay would get the view of downtown dallas um from this location is is unparalleled it's incredible mm -hmm. Um, it's one of the most amazing views I've ever seen, especially at nighttime when all the lights of the, of the skyline are, are lit up and the bridge is lit up. Um, and so I, I immediately was like, I got to tour this space. I got to see this space. Someone's going to take this space from me because this was this was the coolest space I'd seen um, that I could conceptualize putting an arc arcade in ever. And like, you know, it, just kind of thinking back, we're, we're a hardcore nerdy arcade, guys. Like we're a purist arcade to the max. We want old weird obscure games that are awesome and we want people to discover them and stuff like that this is trinity groves dallas um this is like this is where this is hip trendy area um and so like conceptually until we did probably fort worth i never would have imagined something like this coming together but after we had done fort worth on magnolia or just off magnolia and it worked so well in the back of my mind i was like this is the this is a location and I have a picture I have to send our producer after this. Um, it's it's a picture of our DJ Michael Beltran wearing the Dallas Mavericks City Line, uh, City View shirt, standing outside of Free Play Dallas, or actually inside with the with the uh, at the windows, and that's the, the the view behind him. Right. That's the city view it's, it's of the most, Dallas. It's that's basically it. the new iconic view of Dallas. Is yeah, is is the Trinity Groves view of the, the skyline. So. Long story short, we go in there and we start negotiating. It's a challenging negotiation. It's uh, you know, this is. I but think because they're not it, Trinity Groves is not a typical landlord because they don't typically lease their spaces to tenants like us. Um, it was it was a new thing for everybody. And um, and of course, but Trinity Groves is uh, the whole part of the negotiation to try to get this space is they're trying to come back from COVID and they want you know a, a cool partner that's going to bring people in and, and enhance the area mm -hmm. um that's a has a good concept that's not just going to fail that that they can trust that and so and and we're kind of shopping them too right we're, we're saying can we trust them to do what they want to do with their site because we all have to come together to make this a big post-covid push um and so eventually we do we, we were able to ink that deal um to go into Trinity Groves, Dallas, in the biggest space that exists at Trinity Groves, I think. Um, uh, it's the biggest It's the biggest free play yet. Um, it's a massive site. Um, it's, it has the best view of any free play, I would say. And, and that's that's saying something given free play Fort Worth's view of downtown Fort Worth, which yep. is incredible. Best, best rooftop um, bar in all of Fort Worth. It's, yes. it's really, really, but so we ink it. And that was the coolest thing was this is 2021. Um, was it 2020? No, 2022, we signed the lease. Uh, 2022, summer of 2022, we're able, we're in the negotiations, we sign the lease, we get possession of the building right at the end of summer. Um, 
we start working and business is pretty solid now. Um, and so we're feeling pretty good. Oh, and I have to, I feel like I have to, we just mentioned the Fort Worth um, rooftop patio, but during that time, we also revamped that as a tiki bar. Oh, yeah, 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 2022, we launched the free play rooftop patio. So many things. As a tiki bar. Um, With these amazing slushy frozen. Yeah, yeah. it was. And it was also a cool mural by Joe Skills. Yes. Right, and it all that one was something that like because Fort Worth. That was the, the one of the saddest things about COVID was free play Fort Worth was just getting its legs and then phew, lost its legs um, because it was open three months before COVID, and so there were all of these people, all of this um, like crowd, our target demographic crowd that had never heard of it, never went to it, and then COVID happened and. Uh, so we had to figure out some sort of way to make it splash, and they have the greatest rooftop patio that I've been on, I think, um, at Free Play Fort Worth, and it has a bar on the roof directly serving the crowd. And when the weather is nice, it's it is so nice. the nicest place to be. And so um, I w I'd always wanted to experiment more with the alcoholic slushies and, and alcoholic kind of just those kind of fun drinks, and I wanted to get a little bit more high-end because Free Play Fort Worth, of course, has been really pushing our bar forward in terms of cocktails and everything. And you know, tiki cocktails are, are a challenge. It's a lot of fresh ingredients, a lot of, a lot of good mixes that have to come together to make a good tiki drink. So I wanted to push them. And so I came up with, yeah, this, let's turn it into a tiki bar on the roof. And we launched that in 2022 and it worked. It worked great. It's, it's a great bar, great tiki bar. Um, some of the best cocktails period in DFW, um, which uh, in, not to spoil anything, but as we go forward here, Free Play as a whole is about to win best bar in all of DFW, uh, largely because I think we yeah, yeah. we had pushed the envelope so far with our, what an arcade could be. We've got a tiki bar on our Free Play Fort Worth rooftop that is serving some of the best drinks anywhere. Um, Free Play Denton is out there now doing these incredible cocktails with one of the best beer lineups that's ever existed, 50 something taps, incredible. Um, and then we come into Free Play Dallas it's a, it's a challenging build. Um, this was, it was expensive. That's the biggest thing that was happening. So, so in this post COVID world, everything was expensive. Cause when we were building Denton, it was actually still in the middle of COVID. Um, so things there, were challenging. There were things that like you couldn't, I mean, sourcing stuff was our challenging. Our elevator was the biggest nightmare you've ever seen. Cause we like just could still not is, get, I mean, it still is, but <laughs> it ongoing. took like, I don't know, at least a year. And we, it was the very first thing we started, and it was the very last thing that got done to get that elevator fixed. And we talked to maybe like ten different companies, and we had just like it's a whole story. And, and, and it was it was true pandemic, like what exists anymore? Who who in who across? Because it was made by an Irish elevator manufacturer. Who in Ireland is still in business? Is Ireland even allowed to go to the office anymore? Like stuff like that. And the answer was no. Like none of that was. They had been purchased. No one was allowed to work we in had, Ireland. We had companies show up to do work on the elevator and then disappear into the night. And yeah, never, we still have we tools had, that yes, were left by an left elevator their company. Tools like a whole tool and bag. Just have like, never come back for them. It was like they were so. Scared. They just they like, were like, we can't deal with this. Um, but much. but anyways, it was actually not even that hard to fix once we found but the right people. The point was that there were plenty of things that were accessible and affordable at that time um, that have subsequently right like, contractors yeah. weren't working as much, so they were happy to take jobs, stuff like that. By the time we got to Dallas, it, the world had changed, um, and and that's the other thing. If you look at you know, and I don't even want to get into inflation, but if you look at the inflation metrics when we were building Denton versus the inflation metr metrics when we were building Dallas. Was, everything was expensive. Dallas was a hard, challenging build. It was always, and we always wanted to knock it out of the park. Like we knocked Denton out of the park, and Dallas, we had to come even better because we got, you know, the Dallas crowd. They have other arcades. They, you know, they've not all been to free play. Well, and I think that there's a different expectation for Dallas. I think that Denton, we already had an arcade. We were already really well loved in the Denton scene. And we were going to give Denton something that was going to be cool and quirky and cool with the basement and with a cool Denton vibes. Like, we weren't going to screw that up. It was going to be its cool, unique, funky thing. Dallas, we had to do something that was going to be trendy and cool and have really good, like, Dallas vibes. Well, and, and we, fit we, with that Trinity Groves feel. And, and that was going to be the challenge. While staying true to free play, right? Right, like, very so, much. So this is, this is like, the it was the most challenging arcade we've ever um, approached because we had to balance so many different competing values, competing, like, design aspects and stuff like that. And, you know, we had just, I mean, to be honest, I put all of my greatest ideas into Denton, and I had to, like, I had to come up with new stuff. We had to figure, and so for Dallas, right, we thought music. Um, we, wanted to, we wanted to make sure that we had great 
ambient music control. Um, we wanted to make sure that we could have DJs, stuff like that. We wanted to like really, really focus on the sound design aspect of it, which is obviously challenging, challenging because it is actually a nine. I haven't, we haven't mentioned this. It's a 1950s storage silo building <laughs> um, that that just was on the Trinity Banks and happened to be a building that got redeveloped as part of Trinity Groves. Um, so we had all of that going, and then you know I wanted to really, really make it kind of like. Because that was that was the thing when we signed that Trinity Groves lease, I was like, "This is something I never expected Freeplay could do." Um, and then I was like, "So the build has to be something I never expected Freeplay could do. I never thought an arcade could have." So we went incredible on the lighting design, right? I mean, that you you did that almost all the work for Richard. it. <laughs> I I was just like, "This is what it, what it needs to be. Let's go." And Richard was like, "Oh, Corey, wow. let me go crazy." It's, so I had a good time. Well, yeah, it was, it, and it. it looks amazing the finished product and, is and so yeah ah. if you're listening to this and you haven't been to free play dallas i don't even want to spoil it uh, like yeah. that's that's actually my favorite thing you about should pause the video now and go and then go because we'll probably put some pictures up to show everyone what it looks like and you don't like it just feels better to just walk in but yeah free play it. dallas is is the true like when i say arcade of my dreams i don't actually mean like the the arcade that i always wanted to go to it's literally the arcade that i dream of when i'm asleep um, that's, that's what, nice. that's what our free play Dallas is. Um, and it's something that like, it's a different world when you walk into free play Dallas. And that's something that everyone's always said about free play. Like you walk into free play, you don't even realize you, you think you've been there 15 minutes. You've been there four hours, stuff like that. <laughs> but free play Dallas, you walk into and the entire outside world is gone, except for of course the 30 foot windows framing the Dallas skyline. But right. amazing view with, with, if you do it at night, the excellent view of the lighting transposed across right the it's, city it, there's view. there's a reflection of these the, the lighting um and and we got another awesome joe skills mural in there mm -hmm. um we t did kind of a glitch design aesthetic with his murals and stuff like that um i mean really complicated av installs almost everywhere uh we also dropped 150 ish games in the, in there while still having plenty of room for seating um, because that's that's one of the things that that I, I struggle with is getting enough games while also having seating. That's one I was mentioning earlier in the podcast. Richardson, I think we finally learned mm -hmm. Dallas opened with more seating than all of our locations, more games than all of our locations, while still having a gigantic DJ booth, gigantic media facilities, ho biggest host it's stand. It's luxurious. More the hosts have all of this space, space back there. The aisles, kitchen has more. all of this space back there. It's just really cool. So I was at, at Free Play Dallas about a week into the soft opening. And uh, the Mavericks made a substantial trade during that time. Yeah. Yes, and did. I saw a a massive watching party. Just nobody was playing the arcade games. I mean, there were plenty of people playing the arcade games. But this massive watching party for the Mavericks game, sitting at the tables of Free Play Dallas, watching the uh, the Mavericks play uh, with, with Reunion Tower just to our right. It was something, and uh, and the crowd was massive. It was great. Well, yeah, that's, that's the thing. Um, and yeah, you can, we can go ahead and spoil it. Freeplay Dallas opened bigger than any arcade um, that we in our network has ever opened. Um, continues to do great, um, and the reviews have been like Denton, but even somehow even better. Um, and that's that's you know nerve wracking for me. Um, but it is uh, that when we opened Dallas, so we'll roll back really quick. Um, so when we closed Denton. Um, and we were running short staff um, at all of our locations. We had about 32, 33 employees um, at that point. Mm -hmm. Which we, was down considerably which was down, which, from which February was down. 2020. Yeah, and so over the next, getting Denton back, getting everything back, our company has tripled in size um, in terms of headcount, um, in terms of revenue, all of that um, through opening Dallas. Um, and so when we opened Dallas, which was only a couple of weeks ago, um, and we're still in the soft open in Dallas as of the time of this recording. Mm -hmm. um, now I feel like we've we've emerged from the pandemic. Like that's it's true. That's the step. Um, well, that I, I, feel. I will say I started to feel it this last at the end of this last year when we went to party season, which is kind of like we do Halloween parties and then it's it's Christmas parties and things like that. And that party season was out of this world. Right. Yeah. And Corporate it, parties were back, and that that's probably the thing. Even a year into the pandemic, two years in the pandemic, corporate parties hadn't really been back, but. This and we last, kept saying that they were kind of back, but they weren't. Right. This last. Well, that's 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 that was the best and worst part about the pandemic is it, the hope and then dashed and then the hope and then dashed. Yeah. Um. So so maybe right now this is a mistake. No no no. It was definitely no. This last party season, it was definitely back, and everyone came and had an amazing time, and it was crazy. It was a lot of work for our staff, a lot of work, but we we did it. So yeah, we we, you know, we're bigger than ever by far. Um, we. 
are spending money. We're still in growth mode, and it's it's that's something that's that's crazy. But our game floors, our game lineups, better than ever. Every location, every single location, we've been paying attention to the whole time, and that's one of the things that I've seen other arcade chains fail at. I've seen them open new arcades and then not pay attention to their babies, not pay attention to the old ones. Mm-hmm. Um, so at the same time. We've been doing facilities improvement. We have a whole slew of facilities improvements Love scheduled. Well, yeah, our facilities, team has the grown. our facilities team has grown during this period of time. Um, so we're able to do more. Now that Dallas is open, we, we're we finally finding a little bit of space. That's the reason the we're podcasting. The space we were looking right. for back in February of 2020, we have finally only now um, come to. And so this is that's why we're back. That's why we have all these little things that we're going to be working on um, these next, I don't know, six months, nine months. So if you're months. watching this on YouTube content is coming that's 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 probably the best way we can leave this is yeah. we now have content time for content um if if you've been listening to this podcast you probably think um this is probably a great explanation of why we don't have why we didn't have youtube content for three years um it was we were D- denton dallas we were not stopping we we were uh, survival then denton then dallas um was that was it that took mm-hmm. all of the energy we're talking 80 hour weeks across this table every everyone at this table has been working um and now it kind of seems like we're past COVID. So I feel like that was the perfect time to start back on content, right? Um, this is the perfect recap. This was our recap of catching you up. That's, we, we sped through stuff, we skipped stuff, we could have lamented and cried and, and Please don't ta- make me cry again. Talked, talked about yeah, masks and nobody, vaccines nobody and laws. Nobody really wants That's to focus on that because right. we're all really excited about where we are right now today. And where we're going. Before, before we do go, and, and I, I think I just, I have to say this. I've worked every single day from March 2020, just it, all the time. I know everybody at this table has done the same, like just constantly working so much more than anybody could ever give you credit for. I knew you were all working. We, we got separated a lot. We had to do our own things a lot while we were constantly supporting free play, trying to get it back to this moment. And I'm so happy to be at this table having this podcast right now with you three like that means so much to me and this is why this is why you 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 constantly work and constantly do everything knowing that this moment could possibly be somewhere in the future and and i'm so happy to be um at the table talking to you right now yeah it's this is like what's really funny is i kept telling people don't worry youtube's coming back and i didn't know if i believed it when i was saying it um, like especially 2020 when people were like, where's the YouTube? And I was like, we'll be, we'll get back to it. Cause you know, like I'm always optimistic, but at that, when I said it then, I, I don't know if I, if I believed it. And then 2021 came and then I was like, why aren't we doing YouTube? And then we get so busy and so bogged down and, and, you know, I mean, opening arcades is hard. Um, and, and the real thing is a lot of people who watch this aren't in DFW, um, and, or listen to it. And they, they don't really kind of know where, free play is in terms of like our development i'm not trying to brag or anything it's just we're building these these epic amazing arcades that aren't just arcades they're social hubs for an entire community of gamers and nerds and people like us who have always looked for something like this and so like this we have this insane responsibility or at least i I think we do um to to deliver these these amazing products like and I think right now all five of our arcades are in incredible shape. And I think I'm so excited now that we're making YouTube content. We're, we're looking to the future. And I think that this is like the first time we've breathed. We've, we've, we've had a moment to breathe. And YouTube is kind of our breath, right? Like this is, mm-hmm. we, we don't make money doing this. Uh, we don't, it's it's kind of right. marketing, I we're guess. We're going to walk away from this and have like email, full email boxes and like be running around <laughs> like crazy people. But this is kind of, um, this is something that we do to kind of ground ourselves and try to stay connected and try to just like, it's like therapy in a way. Um, and so we're back. We get to do our therapy again. We have time. And so, yeah, if you're watching this, look for a lot more content to come. Um, we are, uh, we're going to film another podcast after this. So we will, we'll have at least two <laughs> podcasts. We are going to be trying to do things like clips for our podcasts and all sorts of fun stuff, walkthroughs, game reviews, higher concept stuff. Um, and we're hoping to flesh out our YouTube channel. Um, give us some time. Some and the the look of this podcast room will probably change. Um, all sorts of stuff is coming. So many things. Um, but uh, we're really happy to be back, and we're really happy that you just listen to this. Um, so we'll talk again very very soon.